and our good friend Mr. Mike Braswell caught a little traffic heading to us so uh, hopefully we won't hold that against him uh, but we definitely gonna go ahead and get this thing started I'm Glenn Glasper affectionately known as Mr. Dollar Out of a Dime and I'm your host of the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show where we share with you real life situations as well as real life solutions to real life real estate things that that we deal with and uh, this show is primarily brought to you by so brought to you so you could know how things happen in the real world of real estate investing and uh, looks like we got some folks that are joining us and we certainly appreciate that for those of you that are joining us please share this feed please share it with your uh, contacts share it with your friends neighbors share it in the business entrepreneur as well as real estate uh, groups on Facebook and for those of that those are that are not following us uh, please connect with us at real life real estate investing so basically today's topic is going to be about how to obtain financing in for your real estate investment projects uh, whether they be fix and flips whether they be buying holes um, whether if you're just buying them to flip them out to someone else uh, there is certainly a way that people with good and or bad credit can obtain financing um, but I won't go into all the details of that I'll certainly leave that up to our good friend mr. Mike Braswell who is coming in the door as we speak uh, introduction to tell people uh, what the show is about okay. uh, I told them a little bit about what we're going to talk about okay. of course I don't know as much as you know about the information so you'll be able to dive right in and tell them uh, how they can obtain I told them basically we're talk, talking about financing how to obtain financing okay. um, I want to first give you uh, major 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 kudos man and you'll you'll get to tell you tell your story I won't get too much into it I'll let you tell it uh, you know I, mean, I know it's your story but I might get a little emotional tell it <laughs> 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 um, just about how you made the decision to go out on your own and um, you know I'm still you know filling the the, the form and was well uh, for, uh, warm and fuzzies <laughs> from the um, the uh, launch party that you had a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, so we had a great time. Yeah, yeah, which it was a great, yeah. great event. Um, but uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll let Mr. Braswell tell him tell us about uh, Braswell Capital Solutions. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Braswell. I am the co-owner of Braswell Capital Solutions, and uh, Braswell Capital was born out of you know just wanting to be my own boss. I uh, worked in corporate America 15 years. I've been a real estate agent. I've worked in lending. I've worked in insurance consulting a number of different fields and I was always unhappy working for somebody else and so uh, earlier this year I decided uh, that I had enough knowledge experience and my network was big enough where I could successfully launch a, a company and do well and I'm um, happy to announce that you know Braswell Capital is rolling right along we had our launch party about a week and a half ago of which uh, Glenn mentioned to you, it was well attended, over 100 yeah, people, had a DJ, great food, I think a lot of good connections were made, and so uh, it really kind of put us out there in, in terms of letting the world know, know that we're, we're here now, right? And uh, what we do is we are a private money broker. So what, what that means for the investors is we have a network of lenders that we do business with, and we leverage our relationships with those lenders to get the best financing possible for our real estate investors. Uh, everybody are familiar with the, I call them the big two here in Atlanta. I won't mention their names. <laughs> I'm sure you know who they are. Braswell Capital uh, Solutions is one, of course. Right, right. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, let me uh, make it as easy as possible for real estate investors to get the finance they need. Mm -hmm. I mean, every lender is going to say they have the best product, they have the best pricing, but you don't really know that unless you spend a lot of time, effort, and energy shopping the market, seeing what other lenders are offering here in Atlanta, outside of Atlanta. And so what we tell investors is you focus on finding the property and let us focus on getting it financed for you. Right. And so you know we believe it's, it's a great partnership uh, and it allows us to keep our pulse on the state of the real estate market, which is ever changing. Guidelines are always changing, rates, terms, fees, what they will do, what they won't do, where they'll lend, where they won't. All these things are always constantly changing. So unless you're committed to uh, doing this job full time as a real estate investor, it's going to be hard for you to really nail down 
uh, all of the financing uh, options that are available to you. And so that's what we bring to the table is that we'll help you find the property, fund it, get it rehabbed and get it sold. And if you're a landlord and you want to do long-term rental income, we'll help you find it, fix it up if need be. We'll help you get it rented out. We'll refinance you out of the hard money loan if you have one on it. And then we'll help you repeat it. So, sounds like, so sounds like I don't have to get out of bed to do my business anymore. No, that, that's, that's the goal is to make it as easy as possible for somebody working a full-time job to be able to invest in real estate and not be worried and, you know, concerned about, you know, working with contractors or working with the home inspectors or working with the appraisal, you know, we're going to be that middleman for you in the sense that we can manage these processes for you. So it's really a turnkey real estate investment for you in a wow. sense, wow. whether it's wow. fix or flip or buy and hold, really making it turnkey because the easier it is for an investor, the more business we're going to do, the That's more right. people you're going to tell about Braswell Capital, and then it's just going to take off from there. You know, and, and you said quite a bit, and, and all of those things are absolutely necessary for, at least for, for myself, even being in the business for as long as I've been, it, it definitely helps to know that if I decide to, like for example, I mean, I had a couple of fix and flips going on, and it was hard for me to go out of town, you know, because I had a student in other places uh, that I was going, to, I wanted to go and teach, but without being in town, it's kind of hard to know if your project is going to continue to go on. You know, if you don't have a project manager in place and you don't have these things in place, and at the time I didn't, um, but it would be good to know that somebody like yourself would provide those services in the event, you know, I had something come up, I got to go teach somewhere else, I don't have to worry about uh, my project going on because you'd be in place to handle something like that for me. Right, I mean, we'll help you find the contractors, the design consultants, mm -hmm. uh, the, the general contractor or project manager to oversee that project so that, you know, you can focus on doing other things. You know, you mm. can duplicate yourself. Uh, that's what you want to be able to do, especially if you're a seasoned investor. You don't want to get bogged down in every deal that you're trying to do. Absolutely. You want to have Absolutely. people in place that can run the project to completion so that it allows you to really scale your business up and do multiple flips or multiple buy and holds, whatever it is your strategy is, at once instead of just having to do one at a time. And we all know that can take three, four, five months from from financing it, you know, getting the rehab done to getting it sold. And so, you know, you only maybe do two or three flips a year by yourself. But with us, with the system that we're putting in place, you'll be able to really scale your business and be able to do more and to be more efficient with your time and your resources and, and your business. Not somebody like myself that was trying to do four or five flips on my own in one year. Oh, and I uh, killed yourself. Man, look, see, that, that <laughs> I, you know, I, I was losing my hair when I was younger, but I think I lost the rest of it. I lost the rest of it, <laughs> yeah. The last couple of years trying okay. to do that. Um, so we got some folks that are joining us. And, guys, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate you guys watching. Um, again, please share this in your news feeds. Please share this with your uh, Facebook friends. Uh, and for those of you that are joining us, please, you know, Go ahead and, you know, start firing some questions away. We'll get to them, definitely. Uh, we're definitely going to provide a way for people to get in contact with Mr. Braswell. And, um, but we want to know, basically, what I'd like to know, and I'm sure you would, um, what are some of the situations that, th that people may run into? Uh, what are some of these situations you guys may run into? Those of you that are experienced investors, as well as those of you that are new investors, what are some of the things that you'd like to know um, about how to either A, get started in real estate investing, or B, how to um, obtain financing and things like that. Um, and, you know, I'm sure a, que a question that will probably come up, you know, what's your credit got to be like, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I'll let you definitely answer that question. Right. Um, but, you know, thank you guys for watching. Um, again, please share it. And um, Please let us know where you're watching from. You know, I mean, we've been on for a few weeks now, actually quite a few weeks, and we got people watching all over the country. Okay. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm sure one of the things that you mentioned earlier is that you can provide financing, you know, yes, across, nationwide. Yeah, across the United States. So we're not just limited to Georgia. We can do the Southeast. Um, you know, we can do up to New York, New Jersey. We can do Midwest. I mean, wherever you are, um, you know, we can help you, uh, you know, obtain the financing that you need. When it comes to the more turnkey stuff, uh, of course, that's going to be here locally, uh, you know, where we are because we have a physical presence here. But we can definitely help you get financed uh, in other states, you know, if you're looking to really branch out and diversify your portfolio. That's good stuff. Uh, so tell me, what, what does someone's credit have to be like to obtain the type of financing that, okay. you get, that you're getting? Okay. On the fix and flip side, uh, you don't have to have good credit uh, to get financed. 
Uh, we can go down to as low as a 500 uh, with some lenders. Uh, they're really looking at the deal. Right, so they're right, like, right. if you bring us a profitable deal in a great area, you provided solid comps to justify the after repair value, um, and obviously you have some money, they're going to do the deal. On the buy and hold side, it is uh, credit based in that you got to have at least a 620 credit score, middle credit score, mm. in order to get financing. So I tell people on a fix and flip, it's really all about the deal. You bring a good deal, you have the money, uh, the down payment and the closing costs um, you know, on hand to be able to, to finance that project. I can get you financed all day. Uh, but you can't have uh, any uh, foreclosures or tax liens or judgments or anything like that in the immediate future. Uh, I have some lenders that they won't even pull your credit. Mm. Um, mm. You know, they're really looking at the deal. Do you have the money? Do you, did you, are you bringing me a good deal? And they'll finance it. Now, of course, in fix and flip world, lenders care about credit, but mm. they don't care about credit. They want to know you're paying your bills on time, that you don't have anything that could potentially encumber the title to the property. Uh, but as long as, as that's uh, not in place, if you have the money and it's a great deal, they'll finance it and uh, you won't have anything to worry about. So, so let's, uh, how about give a, let's give a scenario. Um, and I was actually looking for one, but um, I'll use a couple that I may have experienced in the past. Okay. Um, so you have a deal that um, I want to buy, buy for, we'll say $50,000. Uh, and the rehab is going to be about, we'll say, $25,000. Okay. Um, what ARV, and then I guess for those, you know, for the people that are watching, we'll give those terms, what ARV or what percentage do you loan at? Okay. So in the scenario that Glenn is mentioning, um, get you financed up to 70% of the property's after repair value. Uh, what that means is once you buy the house for 50000 you do twenty. dollars or $25,000 in rehab to it, what will that house be worth uh, given the rehab that you're going to do to it? And so let's say, for example, the after repair value is $150,000, let's say. So I can get you financing up to 70% of $150,000, in this case $105,000. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum amount of financing that you can get on this project. As Glenn mentioned, you're going to be in it for seventy to seventy-five thousand between purchase and rehab. So the deal works. You still have thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars of wiggle room as far as the lender is concerned wow. uh, to wow. be able to do that project. So that's going to be a slam dunk project for a lender, right? Wow. A low LTV. The lower the LTV, uh, the better terms typically you, you may uh, get on that loan in terms of of points, which are a percentage of the loan amount, and mm -hmm. in terms of your interest rates, which range anywhere from 11 to 15 percent. Uh, when you have a lower LTV, you know I can get you down to a nine percent if mm -hmm. your LTV is low on the particular deal. So it's you know the terms that you get ultimately are deal driven. How quickly do you need to close, and how profitable is the deal for the lender's perspective? Um, those are the two biggest drivers for the pricing. Um, typically, investors are going to pay three to five points or three to five percent of the loan amount. So if you're borrowing $100,000, you're going to pay between three to five thousand dollars in origination fees to do the loan. Plus, you're going to have to pay the attorney's cost, title insurance, title work. Uh, you're going to need to get a builder's risk policy, uh, which is going to insure that property uh, over the course of the rehab. That's going to protect you as an investor from liability. Should somebody slip and fall on the project? Should a you know a construction worker get hurt? The mm -hmm. policy is going to kick in to cover the liability for that in the event that someone tries to sue you. So you definitely uh, want to have that in place. Um, and then of course you want to have your business entity document set up. Get your articles of organization. Get your operating agreement. Get your IRS tax ID letter. It's actually something that I do for investors as a value add. I can help you mm. get incorporated, wow. get the operating agreement, and get your tax ID letter. Uh, so, you know, as I said before, I'm going to help you through every step of the process to try to make it as easy as possible for you to get into real estate investing. I'm really big on education. I believe the more you know, uh, the less fearful you are. And so that's what we want to make this process, you know, as easy, as, as smooth as possible. You know, if you got plenty of questions, ask them. We'll walk you through it. We just want to make sure that you understand what you're getting yourself into because we don't want anybody foreclosing on a property. We want you to have a positive um, uh, success with you trying to fix and flip or buy and hold because we know 
the moment you start making money, you're going to want to do it over and over again. And that's what we're about. Absolutely. So you, you'll help with setting up the corporation, the LLC and all that as well? Yes. I wow. have several investors. Wow. I've helped them get that set up. Um, you know, I charge $260 for that. $100 of that goes to the state, if it's in Georgia, uh, to incorporate. And then I can do the other paperwork for the investors as well. Wow, wow. That's a huge value add. Um, I was actually talking to some folks on yesterday uh, about getting started investing in real estate. And, you know, they were talking about, of course, their credit and things like that that they were concerned about. And the one thing they mentioned is they were trying to start a, an LLC. And they said somebody told them it would cost them $2,500 to do that. Yeah, I mean, there are some attorneys out there, I've seen that they'll charge you as little as 5000 on upwards. I mean, 2500 is the most I've heard. I don't know what type of LLC you're getting. Wow, yeah. Uh, but uh, it definitely shouldn't sounds cost like, you that much. Sounds like an aged corporation or something it's like something. that. It, it, it's something else going on with that, but yeah. $2,500, uh, that, that's very expensive. I mean, yeah. you can use that money to get into your first deal. You don't want to spend that kind of money. Uh, just getting your business going. We, we want as much as your money as possible going towards your real estate project. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually looking at some of the questions that we have. Um, some folks that are joining us. Uh, Mr. Belavoir out of Duluth, Georgia. Uh, Mr. Stafford, how you doing, sir? Thanks for watching. Um, and we have Mr. Edward Felder. Uh, I think this is a question. He says, in addition to hard money lending, are you participating in any equity deals on sweetheart properties with ridiculous upside. <laughs> um, I guess he's asking. So just make sure I, I'm, I'm answering your asking your question correctly. Are you asking about participating in any equity deals? So if you could just uh, put that in the comments and let me know so I can make sure I'm asking that qu question correctly. Um, but it is a good question. Uh, are you? Do you have any? And this is where, uh, you know, some of the investors that I spoke to, I speak to on a regular basis, is they don't always have the capital to put down. Mm -hmm. Is there some type of program that would help maybe a new investor or even an experienced investor with having, with, with that, what we call, what we understand is what co what's called gap funding or, or a bridge loan or something like that to help them get that loan closed? Do you have any, any investors that would be willing to participate in something like that? Um, I mean, I don't have a... Any investors that I've approached or talked to about doing something oh, you like can just that? Just go to your bank and pull, um, your, pull the money out and give it to them. <laughs> what, what I tell people to do is if you find a good deal and you're short on the cash to get into the deal, look at doing a joint venture with somebody. Get you an equity mm -hmm. investor, mm -hmm. somebody that has the money that you need, you know, and you partner with them on the deal. Maybe I'll split the profits 50 50, whatever you negotiate. Um, you know, create an LLC with that person. You know, you can make them co-owner of it, you know, 50-50 ownership. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, it gives them confidence, okay, this business entity is set up correctly. If I invest, say, $20,000 for you to do the deal, I'm expecting my principal investment of $20,000 back plus whatever interest that you negotiate. Or maybe it's an equity split. Say you can potentially make $35,000 on the flip. You may want to, you know, split it and, and give them... 17.5, you take 17.5, or you may want to, you know, return their $20,000 back plus a small return on investment for mm -hmm. three or four months, and then you take the difference. You know, whatever you, you got to do to get into that deal. I also tell investors, you know, if you don't have an equity partner available, uh, to look at wholesaling. Uh, this mm -hmm. is something that, you know, Glenn had talked about uh, at a at last month's house jerk meeting, mm -hmm. you know, be, mm -hmm. look at becoming a bird dog to learn a real estate business where you can get paid to, to find these properties. Or the next step is to become a wholesaler, learn how to wholesale, learn, learn how to find off-market properties and flip the contract to the investor and you make your assignment fee. It could be anywhere from $2,500 to $5,000 to $10,000. Get a number of those deals under your belt. Now you have the money that you need to do your own flip. So you really just got to kind of take stock of where you are. Either get you an equity investor, if that's not available, become a bird dog or become a wholesaler to raise the money yourself that you need to get into your own deal. Sounds like you're telling the new folks that they have to uh, uh, crawl before they walk, pretty much. Yes, that's what I say. <laughs> crawl before you walk. Flipping a property is a lot harder than HGTV and some of these other shows make it. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of people get lulled into the thing of thinking that this is something easy, that anybody oh, can do it. You wow. know, they show you how much money they can potentially make, but nobody talks about the process to get there, you know. Right. So you definitely need to educate yourself. Uh, join an organization that teaches wholesaling. 
Um, House Jerk is one of uh, good organizations that I've partnered with that uh, helps teach people how to wholesale and all various aspects of the real estate investing. Then, then there's that one little small little uh, thing. Is, what is it called? Real life real estate investing. <laughs> yes. And then we got Glenn. Yes, real life real estate investing. You got Ramon. You got Ron. You know, there's a number yeah. of people here in the Atlanta market that teach these things uh, day in and day out. So definitely partner with Glenn. You know, mm -hmm. he uh, has students around the country that he works with to show you mm -hmm. how to do this real estate business wherever you are in the spectrum, whether you're seasoned or whether you're a newbie and you, you really want to get into this game. Uh, Glenn is a great coach. He's a great mentor. He knows what he's doing. He's done a lot of deals. And so definitely going to be a great resource for, for the investors out there. I thank you for that shout out, but this show about you though. No, I mean, you know, gotta show love. Man. But you know, no, but but seriously though, um, <coughs> and and that makes your life easier. You know, for guy, for us guys like us, like it's, like you mentioned, Ramon and uh, Ron and those guys that actually teach wholesaling, um, it, it's important for the for people to go through that part of the process so that when they get to you, you don't have to be the person that's doing the teaching. I mean, it's good that you provide a lot of the services that you do, but. I believe that at the very least, when people come to you, they should have at least some type of minimal knowledge of what they're getting themselves into so that you don't have to, you know, basically hold them by the hand step by step all the way. I agree. You know, um, and and that, that way, because in my experience, even working with some people who've done a, maybe a flip, fix or flip or two of them on their own, they never really had a real process of how it works. and. They, you know, so when they get to the point, or you know, especially people that haven't done it before, they get to the point of now I have to teach them, and I'm teaching them the process, and I'm teaching them the the potential roadblocks and the the, the you know the the pitfalls, the pitfalls, yeah. and all those things, and then some of those things come up, right? And and they're not prepared for what to do when those things happen, mm -hmm. and. Oftentimes, I mean, because I've seen things go right and left many different times. <laughs> and um, go it, left real quick. Right, exactly. It's hard for people to grasp when those hiccups come. They think, well, they did it on HGTV in an hour. Why you can't do it in, 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 in at least two weeks? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it definitely gives a false sense that, that this is an easy business. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing I tell people is if you really want to get into real estate and you want to make it a business, you need to make it your business to learn as much as possible about real estate. Um, if you want to be a wholesaler, become an expert at wholesaling. What does that mean? Get the education, the contracts that you need. Uh, align yourself with someone like Glenn that can mentor you and hold your hand through the process. A lot of people want to get into this business, but they lack the knowledge. And it's like, you know, you set yourself up for failure when uh, you're not educated absolutely. enough to do whatever niche of real estate that you're trying to get into. So become an expert as much as you can in that. Read up on it. Uh, shadow somebody that's doing it. You know, see these deals being put together. I mean, you really have to immerse yourself in this business to be successful at it. And frankly, I, I don't see a lot of people do that. You know, yeah. they, they, they want success and they want the money to come easy. And it's like for the people that have been doing it for a long time, now it's gotten to the point where it appears easy to yes. you. But in the day to day, when you're new to this and, and you're learning your systems and processes to make it efficient and effective for what you're trying to do, you quickly understand, like, man, this is a lot of work. There is a lot of things I didn't account for. Right. And so you right. have to be able to <laughs> respond to those things, whatever they may be, and not get freaked out and panic and want to jump ship and say, this is not for me, but really getting with a mentor that can say, look, this is what you need to do. Do this. Don't do that. Uh, education and knowledge is, is power truly in this business, and it'll keep you out of making a lot of bad deals and it will also help to ensure that you make profitable ones so that mm -hmm. you can continue to do this for the long term. Right, and, and that's, that's really the thing that uh, I know a couple of us, we preach and teach these folks in many cases. And, you know, it's, it's somebody that mentioned before, I won't say no names, of course, that said that the best way for somebody to get started in real estate is to start fixing and, fixing and flipping. <laughs> I'm like, how would you, why would you tell somebody to start that way? They have no idea, first of all, what type of property to look for. They have no idea what ty how to assess the repairs. They have no idea how to obtain the financing for that type of property. You know, I work with a couple guys, they, and they want to go get traditional financing for a fix and flip. You know, and, and I find that to be odd because you're only going to get, they're going to loan based on the LTV 
of the property, loan the value. And that means if you're buying the property at $50,000 and they're only going to loan you 80% of the $50,000, then you got to go out and obtain additional financing for the fix up. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that's how, that's how they, I'm like, why, why would you go that route as opposed to going because, you know, one guy said, well, I don't want to pay a high interest rate. But if you're not going to pay a high interest rate, you're still going to be paying two separate interest rates, especially if you don't have the cash to invest in fixing the property up. Right. So what I find is the simplest way is to, is to connect with somebody like yourself to go through those steps to obtain the financing where they can purchase and fix the property up at the same time. Right. You know. I mean, what we do are investor-friendly loans. So mm -hmm. that means low documentation. Uh, we're not asking you for tax returns. We're not asking you for pay stubs, W-2s. You can be unemployed. You can be self-employed. The lending that I do is asset-based, so we're looking 90% of how the project is being evaluated is based upon the property itself, 10% is based upon you, whereas on, in the banking world, and I used to be, I used to work, work for a major bank, it's 90% based upon the borrower, 10% based upon the property. Right, and they're right, not going right. to finance that deal if the house is not in what they call livable, livable condition, yeah, yeah. right? So that automatically... Uh, you know, discount you from being able to even get a fix and flip loan from a bank because that's not what they do. Mm -hmm. these, these loans are highly speculative. It's based upon what the house might sell for once you actually do the rehab. Mm -hmm. Very little documentation is required. These are short-term loans and so what I do is designed specifically for fixing and flipping and buying and holding. Um, we're not going to make you jump through a lot of red tape. We're not going to look at your debt to income ratio, all these things that a bank is going to look at to decide whether or not to lend you money. If you have the money to do the deal and you've done the homework to determine uh, what you should pay for it, what your rehab budget should, will be, and what realistically you can sell that property for, by the time you come to me, it should be a slam dunk. Uh, and I have an equation I give investors uh, to look at to help you determine what you should offer on any property that you're looking to do a flip on. And if you don't mind, I'd like to oh, give absolutely. that equation. Absolutely. Definitely, uh, definitely. The equation is after repair value times 70% minus the rehab budget minus the holding cost equals the maximum allowable offer that you should make on that flip. Mm -hmm. Stick to this equation and it will save you a lot of time, energy, and money. That's Violate like, this equation. Like and you're going to <laughs> lose money, I guarantee yeah, yeah. Uh, Be conservative on your purchase price. Uh, find you uh, one or two contractors that can give you a solid rehab estimate and find a real estate agent that can do uh, what's called a CMA, a competitive, comparative market analysis for you to, to give you an idea as to what this house will sell for given the repairs that you want to make to it. So as long as you have that, those team of people in place, your contractor, your real estate agent, and you utilize this equation, uh, this will help to keep you from making a bad deal. Now when a lot of investors use this equation, they quickly find out a lot of the properties that they thought were good properties, mm -hmm. they quickly find out they weren't <laughs> they doubt, once yeah. they run these, the numbers through this equation. Because it's designed to ensure that you can make a 30% return on your money if you mm -hmm. stick to this equation. So investors, I, I can't say it enough, use this equation. I'll give it to you one more time. After repair value times 70%, minus the rehab budget, minus holding costs, and holding costs are simply uh, the interest-only payments that you have to make during the course of that loan. So if you estimate it's going to take you three months to rehab that property, and let's say your payment is $1,000 a month, now you need to account for in that equation $3,000. Those are your holding costs for this loan until you're able to rehab it and get it sold. Mm -hmm. So ARV times 70% minus the rehab budget, minus holding costs, equals the maximum offer that you should make for that particular property. This, this will work pretty much in any market. Um, it doesn't so much work that well on the lower end properties, you know, like an ARV of 50, 60, 70,000. Right, right. This is really good for $100,000 and up after repair values. Uh, the numbers can get a little bit tricky when you're dealing with the smaller projects just because, you know, of the amount of rehab that you may need to get that property ready. Absolutely. So the equation is a little bit different. I would say under eighty, ninety thousand dollar ARV, but above that, this equation will work all day. And and if you're a real uh, anal counter like me, I count insurance costs, I count 
potential uh, utility costs and things like that. So oh. I try to. <laughs> so you get real, real conservative with it. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, another way yeah, to do it. I mean, yeah. Glenn is even more conservative. I mean, you might want to instead of saying set ARV times seventy percent, you might want to do ARV times sixty five percent. And that, in most cases, is what I look at. Like, okay. You know, and, and even even though there are programs that you, like you have that that will loan up to seventy percent. Mm -hmm. I try to stay as conservative as possible at 65%. I'll mm -hmm. go 67, 68 maybe, you know, but that I still want to leave enough room for the delays that may come up. Mm -hmm. You know, where my where I anticipate my holding cost to be 6 months, it may be 9 months. Right. You know. So those are things that and that a lot of times when people are doing this, they don't always factor in those possibilities of what may happen. No, they never do. Right, right. right. So, you know, and, and, and I know, I mean, it's, it's and, and now in the market that we're in now, I, I don't know very, I mean, I don't know very many 65% ARV properties that are out there. No. You know, they're becoming more and more 70% ARV or 75 or some of them 80, <laughs> depending on who the wholesaler is. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Right about that. Um, but, I mean, even in those instances, even if you're, even in those instances, if you're prepared even if you go and get a property where it, it may be 75%, 80%, 80 you guys are only loaned up to the 70% ARV. Exactly. If you're prepared to put down that additional 5 to 10%, then have that in mind, but also know that that's going to cut into the profit that you you know anticipating to make on the other side, right. You know, yeah. which is okay in some cases. You know? I mean, anytime you're going to have to bring extra, a larger down payment, to the closing table to get into the deal, that's a surefire sign that this is not a good not deal. Not a good deal. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's not profitable <laughs> enough for the time, effort, and energy you're going to put into this project mm -hmm. to eke out such a small return on the back end. Mm -hmm. I mean, now using this equation, the equation that I gave you, when you filter, you're going to filter a lot of properties through this. You may find 20 properties that you're interested in, and maybe only one or two of them will meet the standards of this equation. Mm -hmm. Even fewer mm -hmm. if you use uh, Glens of 65% ARV instead of 70%. But that, that 65% used to be industry standard. <laughs> it used to be. Now it's kind of gone up a little bit. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, particularly here in Atlanta because it's, like you said, it's getting harder and harder to find a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, so you definitely want to make sure you find a profitable deal. Get with some reputable wholesalers that can send you over some great projects uh, if you don't want to spend the time, effort, and money that it's going to take, you know, in order to to generate your own off-market leads. Get with some good wholesalers, which you, you can meet by going to a good friend of mine, Ramon Tooks. He has a deal makers deal meeting makers. on Thursdays. A lot of wholesalers come there. You can look at joining the Georgia RIA, the Atlanta RIA, the South Atlanta RIA. You know, these are organizations that are, are and, designed. And we, want, we want affiliate prices <laughs> for marketing, okay. Atlanta, Rhea, and Georgia, Rhea. Yeah. No, I'm just no. kidding. Oh, okay. No, it's good. It's so good. I, I tell people that's how you get your education. Yeah, right? oh, absolutely. You got to educate absolutely. yourself. These are great organizations uh, to become a part of. Mm -hmm. Where you know it will that's teach where, you how to really start. In, me too. Yeah. I mean, Georgia, yeah. Rhea, back in '06 when it used to be, you know, a, a thousand people. Yeah, up in there, I was in Georgia, Rhea, in '01. '01. Wow. Yeah. 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 In '01, I was. I joined Georgia, Rhea. I, I think it was '01. Yeah, right before I, uh, I left my job, yeah. or my job left me. <laughs> so I say that to say you guys need to network, network, mm -hmm. network, network. Uh, meet as many people as you can. Talk to as many people as you can. Exchange information with people. Your network is your net worth in real estate. Uh, Don Jacob says he needs some cash now. <laughs> okay. I got you, Don. <laughs> Uh, Don, you know, you get your cash, you just go to the bank, or, or they, they might you, they might bring you your cash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you talking about Don Jacobs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like Don probably lending his own money. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, we got um, a couple other people that are joining us. Uh, let's see, can kind a of person set up an LLC with you, even if they are not ready to do a hard money deal yet? Uh, say that again. They, they want to know if you would help. I guess the question is if they if you would help them set up an LLC if they're not ready to do it a hard money yet. Definitely will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely. Uh, you should have your LLC regardless of whether or not you're ready to start investing or you yeah. actually have a project. You need to have that set aside so that when you find something, you're able to move on it. Absolutely. Uh, it typically Absolutely. takes anywhere from four to five days in Georgia to get your articles of incorporation back. So definitely get started on that now. And um, 
you know, that way when you find a project, you're ready to rock and roll because the first thing the lender is going to ask you for are your business entity documents and your tax ID letter, and you want to have that in place. Definitely. And Definitely. your operating agreement, excuse me, as well. Uh, Jacob says, is he's, he's in D.C., do you... You doing you doing cash here? <laughs> yeah, we definitely we lend in D.C., Virginia, Maryland, Philly. Yeah, so I can definitely get you financing up there. What will you do, Detroit? Detroit, Detroit, <laughs> Detroit's tough. Every time I ask that question yeah. about Detroit, man, you always yeah. say, "Oh, Detroit." <laughs> Detroit. Yeah, I tell investors, I mean, I haven't done anything up there, um, but I just know from being in lending, Detroit's a tricky place to get financing. Mm -hmm. uh, just because mm -hmm. the, the price point of the properties up there. I hear you can get properties up there five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. So, I mean they're going up, the prices yeah. are going up. I mean, but they're still kinda kinda low, low compared to what right. we see here. Yeah. I think a lot of lenders are, are, are fearful of Detroit unless they're a local lender that really understands that market, where to lend, where not to lend, mm -hmm. neighborhood by neighborhood, street by street. And so that's why it's hard to find financing in Detroit because unless you really know that market like the back of your hand, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you're hesitant to lend money because you just don't know if you're going to get it back. Yeah, I know typically uh, a few of the lenders that I've spoken to that would potentially do uh, deals in Detroit, it's one or two specific zip codes that they'll lend in, in, I mean, within the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they're, I mean, that's not the only city in Michigan. Um, so, so many other lenders will offer financing outside of Michigan because there's tons of deals even outside of Michigan. I mean, I'm sorry, outside of the city like of the Detroit. the suburbs, right? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So that, would that be something that yeah, you guys definitely. would do? Yeah, oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, some of the suburbs, fine. But what they call D, the city of Detroit, mm -hmm. yeah, very tough. But, yeah, definitely some of the suburbs. Um, there's I can't. There's one um, El Elkins, Elkinsburg or Elkinsville, something like that. That uh, somebody was asking me about. And you know, when you look it up, it's it's a nice little suburb. Values are are good, so oh, okay. it's, it's a stable area. And, oh, okay. You know, okay. so you know, for lenders, it has to be in a stable, appreciating market, and that's what they're looking at. You know, how quickly can you get in and out of this property so that you can pay me back? Mm -hmm. uh, you know. This loan is for 12 months or less. It can't take more than 12 months. Right, right. right so right. Mm -hmm. they want to know, can you get in and out as quickly as possible so I can get my money back, you make your profit, and you move on to the next deal. You can do Detroit, but look at the suburbs of Detroit. It's difficult to get financing in the city of Detroit mm -hmm. itself right now. Uh, I think, you know, lenders are going to have to see a lot more development and growth mm -hmm. uh, and jobs come back to Detroit in order to... Uh, feel comfortable enough to lend in the city of Detroit. And, and that's the thing, well, I mean, you know, not to go off on, off of what we're talking about as far as financing, but uh, in the city of Detroit, I'm, because I'm from Detroit, I can kind of speak on it, but um, a lot of things are happening there. And, uh, and a lot of people are not paying attention to it. Well, mm -hmm. those, are, those are the people that are in the city are not paying attention to it, but you have a lot of investors that are outside that are coming in paying cash for a lot of the property today. Yes. You have a couple of the developers there. Um, I know we've got with Quicken Loans and some Home Depot folks that they were buying some of the distressed properties and revitalizing them to create comps in the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So they're driving values back up. There you go. You know, so, uh, and I, I believe that might be one of the zip codes that the lenders are potentially looking at loaning in. Right. You know, because for the most part, what people were having issues with is during the crash, uh, when everybody was trying to refinance their house, or even now, some people were trying to refinance their houses, but they couldn't get comps in the area because mm -hmm. a lot of the folks that were in the area, they left their houses, and the values you went completely down. Yeah, a lot of vacant, dilapidated houses exactly. on the block. Right? How, how you how you going to justify the value? And that's that was the yeah. issue that they were having. Yeah. You know, so that's where they came in and they start you know fixing these houses up and they're selling them on seller financing, which creates a comp. Mm -hmm. You see. So that's how they're driving the, the values back up. Yeah, but, you know. but to what Glenn is saying, you've got to have deep pockets to do yes, that. Right? Indeed. I mean, I yes, indeed. I was talking to a gentleman. He's looking at buying uh, uh, a portfolio of like 50 properties from a bank. Right? Wow. And wow. paying, I don't know, maybe a million dollars for it, 1.2, like some ridiculous Really, number, really. Just to take it off the bank's books. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, now you got to, I think he's going to turn around and wholesale these to, to other investors. That's going to be his play. He's not going to fix them up and sell them. He's just going to wholesale them for a small wholesale yeah. fee because there's so many properties that's how he's going to make his money 
it was a couple guys in Michigan. I mean, still still on the topic of Michigan, it was a couple guys in Michigan, I believe, in uh, I want to say Oakland County, that got together that put together a fund mm -hmm. with a few million dollars, and they bought up a ton of properties around. You know, people were upset about it. <laughs> like, why are you upset if they're buying the properties? And we'll see. And, I, and the thing is, I think they were doing basically the same thing. They were buying them just to sell them, mm -hmm. and they may not have been doing any uh, repairs or anything to them. So. Right. Um, but real estate investors are the ones that, uh, you know, help bring the real estate market back from absolutely. after after the crash. You know, it was largely led by real estate investors. So mm -hmm. some people try to give real estate investors a, a bad name or, you know, but real estate investors are the ones responsible for all the growth that we're seeing here in absolutely. Atlanta now. Absolutely. So it's, it's investors, it's developers yeah. and investors. Right, right. I mean, you think about it, um, who else is going to do it? <laughs> the government's not going right. to do it. Who else is going to do it? You know, you have houses. I mean, of course we do it because, you know, well, I do it because I enjoy it, and many other people do it because they enjoy it. And to see something go from dilapidated to now, you know, a very nice place that someone can put their family in. Right. Um, but a lot of times, uh, if if we didn't step in and buy these houses and fix them up, you know, of course we do it for money too, but if we didn't do it, they would just sit there, they would just you sit know. There. Uh, I mean, you have people that have walked away from houses and they owe taxes on them and things like that. You know, of course, we can just go pay the taxes and, and buy the property. Okay. You know, there's, there's no other liens against the property. Um, but I want to make sure we get, okay, get back to, uh, we got a couple, had a couple people that joined us. Uh, Miss Auburn Shelton, how you doing, Auburn? That's my cousin. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, we had Robin Gowers. She said she needs you to repeat your contact information. We hadn't got to that part yet, Robin, but we'll, we'll definitely get there because we want to make sure y'all watching. If you give us contact information, y'all might go back to work. This is a lunchtime learning session, so you should be on lunch time, lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she asked if you lend in Chicago. Yes, you can get you for some financing in wait, Chicago. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all can lend in Chicago, but y'all won't lend in Detroit. I said, I was going to say Chicago, but like I said, it, it, it's, it's parts of Chicago because uh, Chicago has some uh, funky lending laws where it make it hard for a lender mm. if they have to foreclose to take back that property. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, really? I mean, it can, be, it can be a year or two. I've heard it taking lenders two to three years to go through the foreclosure process in Chicago. Wow. And so you wow. have people in Chicago that know these laws and they, they exploit these laws to their advantage. Wow, uh, that's something else. So yeah, I mean, yeah. you can you can get financing in Chicago, but um, you know, it just may be at a lower LTV. You know, lenders may cut their LTV a little bit really, just to kind of really. protect themselves, you know. That's but yes, know. you can get yeah. financing in Chicago. That's good to know. So, so even for like a fix and flip type of situation, that will be? Yeah, I mean, if the deal makes sense, I mean, you've got the comps to justify the ARV, and, mm -hmm. and it's in the, it's in a, you know, a good area where it's something you can quickly sell. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I do is on it is deal by deal. I tell people I don't give blanket policies got or blanket it, guidelines it. to everybody because yeah. it really comes down to the deal. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. real estate is about location, location, location. Right. That's true. So true. if it's in a good location, you've got it for a good price. You've got your rehab budget on the con under. Uh, tight, you know, tied down where you're confident that you can get these repairs done for this amount and you provided three solid comps to show you know, your value. Of course, the, the lender's gonna do an appraisal, but you still have to, on the front end, do your due diligence for yourself and for me, when you're gonna send the deal to me, that I can feel confident that you know, I'm not wasting my time, you're not wasting your time on Absolutely. this project, that this is a financeable project. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of investors who haven't done their homework and the projects just aren't financeable. Mm -hmm. And then they're still trying to figure out how to make it work. <laughs> and it's like, if you're trying to you know, do all this financial maneuvering to try to make it work, it's probably not a good deal. And then they tell you that you're not doing something right. Right, <laughs> right. You know, you, know, I, you know, I'm honest, so I'm gonna tell you up front whether or not you, know, th you can get the deal done. I'm gonna tell you what mm -hmm. I think about it. Because at the end of the day, you, know, you don't want to be chasing your tail uh, always looking for a deal but never doing one, right? right. We Absolutely. actually want you out here doing Absolutely. deals that are going to yeah. put money in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, and that makes sense. You know, and, and that's a very good point, you know, for people who don't know much about how the, the, the process works when they're finding a deal. I mean, if you gave them perfect information, you know, give them that, that uh, mail, what we call it, the, the maximum allowable offer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that in and of itself is, like I said, a perfect way to get 
the right type of deal. Mm -hmm. But the problem I find that many people don't know how to evaluate the repairs. Mm -hmm. And they'll try to go and they'll try and eyeball it, you know, and they're just getting started. They try to eyeball it and say, oh, well, this might cost this and this might cost that, as opposed to getting someone with experience or a contractor to go out and look at the property and give a good estimate on what the price may be. Right. And that's where a lot of times they end up accepting a higher price because they're lowballing the repair cost. Mm -hmm. You know, so they will moving numbers. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'll pay $100,000 knowing you should only pay 50 because your repair cost is going to be about 50 and you're saying, oh, it only cost me $10,000. Nah. No. Yeah, no. That's And that's where I've seen people get in trouble because they get either quarter way or half way through the project mm -hmm. and it's in no condition to sell or no condition to even rent because they didn't budget for what the actual repairs were, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's good that, you know, they have somebody like yourself that would take them through and let them know, this is, this is not going to work, you know, because you have people that come out and inspect, I'm sure, yes. you know, to be sure that the repairs that they're suggesting is going to be actually what they do, first of all. And then second of all, that it makes sense to even do that to, for it to get the after repair value that they're looking for. Yeah, I tell people, I, like, I guess a lot of people think it's going to cost them a lot of money to have a contractor come out and look at it. Some contractors, they won't even charge you anything. They'll give you right. a free estimate. Right. So, and even if you've got to pay them, you know, a couple of hundred dollars, I'd rather pay a couple of hundred dollars than to lose thousands of dollars on yes. the back end. So, yes, indeed. I yes, tell indeed. people, you know, you've got to spend money to make money in this business. Don't, don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money to get that deal evaluated properly to get you you know, as accurate of a rehab budget as possible because your numbers are being driven off of that. What mm -hmm. you buy the property for, how long it takes you to do the rehab. I mean, a lot of stuff is predicated on that rehab budget. And so you want to make sure that you get an accurate one. Now, of course, you can't account for everything, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. you know, start tearing down walls and doing this and doing that, you're, you may find some stuff that you just did not see because <laughs> you couldn't visually discern what was going on. So I've seen that so many times. Right. Yeah. So you definitely just, just make sure you get an accurate, you know, as possible rehab budget uh, to make sure that, that you know what you're getting yourself into. We don't want your rehab budget going from 30000 to 50000 right, right, right. Now the profit that you were going to make you know, is largely gone, and you're just happy to, to get out, you know, with your, with your shirt still, yeah, you know. Yeah. And what's the likelihood that you're going to want to do another deal after that experience, right? Probably not so, very much. Not very much. Yeah. So. Um, so, so I got a question. Would, do you guys allow that miscellaneous line item for in, in the rehab cost? Miscellaneous, I mean, I would definitely say, yeah, throw that in there. I mean, the lender, as long as... It's not some huge number. It's not typically going to balk at it. Okay. And at the end of the day, does it fit within what they're going to lend you based upon the ARV? Okay. I mean, they understand, you know, what are like contingency stuff that got may come it, up that it, you didn't account it. for. Uh, and only a, a wise investor is going to account for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can be some huge $10,000, $15,000 yeah. line <laughs> item, and your rehab budget is only $30,000, right? right? <laughs> and you might be able to get off of 2500 Maybe five thousand, but it right, can be a right. significant portion of your overall budget. Got it, got it. Well, that was that question was for me. You so <laughs> <laughs> maybe y'all benefit for that. You know, <laughs> y'all want to know what I was talking about? Ask that question then. Um, but we got some good stuff. Uh, oh, Robin says she's not on lunch, but she's watching anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't get caught, Robin. Yeah, it's good, Robin. <laughs> um, and you know, for those of you that are just joining us again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to share it. And um, continue to send us your questions, and we're we actually going to be wrapping up shortly, but we'll get to, get to many, as many of the questions as we possibly can. Um, so we have uh, Mr. Damien Huckleberry says, how quickly can you close? Uh, closing as little as seven days, mm -hmm. uh, but I tell investors, at least try to write the contract for 14 days. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some wiggle room. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I closed the deal a few weeks ago uh, in seven days over the 4th of July weekend. Wow. Uh, wow. And so, you know, but I tell them that if you need a quick closing, it's going to cost more, right? Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. not going to get fast and cheap. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how this works? No. That's not, not how, how it any of this works. <laughs> so the more time that you have to close, uh, potentially the better terms that you can get. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do. I have a couple of lenders I can close in as little as seven days. Uh, and even one of my lenders, he doesn't even ask for an appraisal. Mm. Um, 
you know, he's going to come out and evaluate the property himself. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, he, he doesn't trust appraisals. He's, they're just somebody's opinion of value. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. He's like, you yeah. know, your opinion and reality could be two different things. This is true. So yeah. yes, I can close in a little of seven days, but try to write your contracts for at least 10 to 14 days if you can. Well, if you can't, you got to do seven days just to get the deal. I understand that, uh, but it's going to cost a little bit more in order to do a, a seven-day closing. So, uh, one thing I'm seeing is you know it's taking long as, as long as seven days to pull title. Exactly. You know, so uh, definitely write your contracts for a little while longer. Um, but one thing I want to make sure we address is um, when people ask how quickly can you close. I know, I know the thing that I would say is, is how quickly can you be prepared to close? Because some people will come and ask you how quickly can, can you close and they don't have their stuff together. I'm glad you, you see, brought that they up. They haven't even filled out an application. They don't get the application to you to three days later. And then they still want you to close. They want you to close. From seven days from when they first talked to you. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, closing date is largely predicated, just like Glenn said, on the borrower. I Absolutely. Mean, providing the documents in a timely manner and getting them to me so I can look at them, make sure they're right, mm -hmm. and then for me, to get them to my lending partner. That's what holds up closing. Unless mm -hmm. there's something going on with title work, um, you know, 90% of the closing time is predicated on the borrower. Absolutely. So it's amazing Absolutely. to me how like, that you brought that up. Yeah. That's what happens yeah. and it's like, Oh, I've seen it. You know, I can, we can't <laughs> close until we have 100% of everything that we need. So you get me what I need up front and you know, the sooner you do that, the sooner we can close. You know, I, I've seen where people actually want to know how quickly can they close, and you don't even have a property under contract yet, and you're ready to close. I get that question all the time, <laughs> and my whole thing is, you know, bring me a deal first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can throw out some numbers to you. Sounds good. I, I can close you in know? three days. Right. How quickly can you give me your contract? Right. You know, and that's the thing. So. You know, people have. You know, we want to make sure people understand that the, there, the, there are processes and procedures to everything that you do. And even though you can quote a seven day closing, again, it's predicated on what the person that's bringing the deal, what they have done. You it's know, your so. track record. Absolutely. Absolutely. What Absolutely. is your track record? You know, do you have sufficient capital to get into the deal? That's true. You're gonna yeah. need 10 to 20% of the total project cost. You're gonna need to pay for your closing cost. You're gonna need to pay for a builder's risk insurance policy. You know, you're gonna need to be able to pay for the title work. So, mm -hmm. do you have everything that you need? Do you have your articles in place? Have you filled out an application and provided me with some comps so that I can see whether or not this is a financeable deal? You send it to me in a package. I tell people, clean file in, clean file out, right? Mm -hmm. Clean file equals quick closing. If you got a messy file, you're piecemealing documents to me, you're all over the place, you're not organized, that closing is not going to take seven days or ten days. It may take 21 days based upon the borrower, not based upon me or the lender. So I'm glad we're doing this show, so don't tell people I do that kind of stuff, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there before. Uh, what you need, I'll get that to you tomorrow. I'm still out looking for, looking for deals. I should be sending you the documents that I need. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I know how that is. Um, does he lend to Macon, Georgia? That's in Georgia, I imagine. Yeah, we lend to Macon as long as the numbers work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we have, what about, uh, man, I want to make sure I read this right. What about seven 500,000 rebuilds on one street and one house not rebuilt, but owner wants the full market price for that house according to the market before other seven houses were redone? How do you, that's a long question. How do you evaluate that house? Hmm. So you're saying they have a, there are seven houses in the neighborhood or on the street that oh. are that are retail for half a million dollars. Yeah. The owner, who hasn't done anything to their property, is wanting to sell their house for the same retail value as these <laughs> rehab not properties. Happen. That's not going to happen. I mean, <laughs> what, what's the condition of the property? Right. Right. right exactly. I mean, it, you got to back into how much rehab. Is going to be needed to justify a five hundred thousand dollar retail value, right, right? Right, and then right. you're going to have to kind of work backwards to determine what you need to pay for the property uh, compared to what you need to re renovate it for. Because at the end of the day, you're only going to get up to seventy percent mm -hmm. of five hundred thousand, right, right? Right, right. So, you know, run your numbers off that. You may have to offer them, you know, three three hundred thousand. Maybe you got to do a seventy thousand dollar rehab to get to the half a million dollar price point. 
Got it, got it. And, and I think I understand the question now, and it makes sense. You know, they're basically asking, how do you evaluate that house that's not been redone, and that's around, that, that has all the other houses around it that have been redone? It, you, have to, you have to compare apples to apples. You know, you can't compare that little bitty house to these $500,000 houses that are around it. That's right. just no comparison. I mean, is that person's house 2,500 square feet and all these half a million dollar houses are 3,500 yeah, square feet? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. because that means you're going to have to add 1,000 square feet on That's to that right. person's house and do all these other rehabs to get to that half a million. So, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, you really got to do your homework on that property to determine what you need to offer that, that seller. And mm -hmm. it sounds to me like they're not budging and that they're living in la-la land in terms of what they can get for it. So that's one of those deals you, you move on. Wait. There are so many properties out here, if you're dealing with somebody that's difficult, that's not being realistic about you know, uh, what their house is actually worth, you just need to move on to the next deal. All right, we're, uh, we're wrapping. I got a question though. I think we got most of, uh, he said he wants 180K. 180K, yeah, you might, might not be bad though. He wants 180K? Yeah. And you, Something else going for, oh, there's, yeah. there's plenty of room in there. Yeah, that's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. I mean, because depending on how big it is, if you're adding square footage and depending on the finishes, you might only spend $150,000. Yeah. You, you all in 330, retail it for five. Mike, oh, get yeah. in contact with me. I'll take that deal. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing like I want that myself. Right, right, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that deal. <laughs> get in contact with me, Michael Williams. <laughs> not a bad deal. No, nah, not at all. Um, one question that I have. Is I know we talked about being able to get into financing and getting all of the, um, you know, basically not being credit based. How easy, how much easier, if at all, would it be to obtain financing if a person's credit was in a better place, if they had a 700 credit score? I mean, you're going to get, you know, better terms. I mean, typically your interest rate, I mean, the fees will come down slightly, mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely going to impact the rate that you get. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it does help to have good credit. Good credit defined as 700 or better. That's kind of like the barometer. 700 or better, you're going to get better terms than somebody that's at a 640 or a 620. Because it's still risk-based pricing. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's all about the risk that the lender is assuming. Got it, got it. Okay. And um, I know some folks that have help with credit situations, so if you guys want to know about that, definitely get in contact with me. Um, one question that, that was asked to me, I want to make sure we get an opportunity to address this, okay. um, and I don't know if this is something that you can you know, speak to, um, about business lines of credit. Business lines of credit. Is that um, something that you get involved in at all? I mean, there's a company that, um, that uh, we, my wife and I did, did business with recently to get personal lines of credit and business lines of credit. Um, so yes, I, I can refer uh, the company to you if you give me a call. Um, they helped us get funding and they can help you get funding as well. Good stuff. It's not something I do personally, that's something that I, I refer out because that, that's a niche and there's a lot that I found out that goes, goes mm -hmm. into determining how much funding you can get somebody and who they apply for, when they apply for, like there's a science to it. Oh it is. Yeah, it there's is. a science to well, it. Well I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to somebody I know, okay. uh, 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 Mr. Eric Barlow with FundSource. Uh, with FundSource, uh, he actually helped me get a line of credit a while back. Oh, actually, okay. a couple people actually, you okay. know, I referred him a couple people and he helped him get a I line of credit. I didn't even know credit. Eric did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Eric never told you that? Uh -huh. No, business line? No. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, shout out to Eric Barlow. Make sure you're telling people that's what you do. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, I think that's we. That's all we have. Uh, we have Myrna Polk that joined us. Thanks for watching, Myrna. Uh, Tammy Bowers that joined us. Uh, again, guys, for those of you that joined us, share this in your news feed, share this with your friends. Uh, we want to make sure you know people are able to get in contact with Mike, so we're going to share his information. And we want to be able to help you guys get started in investing or continue to invest. So how, how can folks get in contact with you, Mike? Uh, yeah, you can reach me at 770-854-2194. Uh, that's my work cell phone number. Uh, my email address is mbraswell. M B R A S W E L L at Braswell Capital Solutions dot com, and you can also go to the website Braswell Capital Solutions dot com. Uh, you can fill out information on there, uh, inquiries if you have a deal you're looking at, or if you want to get in contact with me, and I uh, make it a point to follow up with everybody within 24 hours. Good stuff. Good stuff. 
All right, guys, and uh, you have my contact information if you need to reach me for any reason. Uh, I mean, I'm taking on new students now, so for those of you that uh, want somebody to help you walk through the process of learning how to wholesale, learning how to fix and flip, or whatever the case may be, you can reach out to me. You can actually connect with me on Facebook, at Real Life Real Estate Investing, uh, or you can connect with me on Instagram, at Real Life Real Estate Investing, and I'm at Mr. Dollar Out of a Dime on Instagram. And you can email me at Jabri Team, that's J-A-B-R-E, Team, at gmail.com. Um, again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, and I know that this information, I mean, I've learned some stuff today as well. So it uh, looks like I'm going to begin some new financing in the next couple of days. <laughs> All right, let's do business. Uh, so, again, thanks, guys, for watching this. And uh, we'll be back next week, and oh. we have a surprise for you next week. Oh, oh one more thing. Okay. Check us out on social media, Braswell Capital Solutions. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on LinkedIn. So please like us on social media, follow us, and uh, let's partner up, let's communicate, and let's get some deals done together. Yeah, I, w I would even finish to say, I mean, just I mean, if you want to just have somebody evaluate with, with, with evaluating deals, would you help out with that? Yes, I have a, a fix and flip deal sheet, I call it. So. I can uh, email it to you. You kind of fill that out with the particulars that I, I look at, get that back to me, and then I can you know, quickly look at that deal for you. But also, you, know, uh, you can look at the deal for yourself even before you call me by using mm -hmm. that equation. Mm -hmm. you know, so fill out that deal sheet, run your numbers through that equation, and then if it works, you know, give me a call and we can talk about it. Okay, okay, good stuff. Thank you guys again for watching. And Beatrice says, great show. Thank you, wife. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right.